All right, I want to talk to you today a little bit about using electrotherapy for cosmetic purposes. In the United States, we do not use electrotherapy as much as it is used over in Europe and parts of Asia for cosmetic purposes. Now, when I'm saying cosmetic purposes, I'm talking about people that have cellulite. I'm talking about people that have a great deal of wrinkling. I've got talking about people that are trying to get a better color to their features, to their face. And this is where electrotherapy comes in. And I just wanted to give you a couple little ideas about what goes on when you're using electrotherapy for cosmetic purposes. One is you may have people that come in, have little bags under their eyes. They tend to have more fluid in their face. And one of the things that happens with electricity is any time you have and not any fluids, but specific fluids like acids and so on, they have a charge and say it's, it's a negative charge. So if this negative fluid that is in someone's face has a charge of minus 100 millivolts and I take an external stimulator, a cosmetic stimulator, a muscle stimulator, a high frequency interferential stimulator, and I apply 400 millivolt, negative 400 millivolts against 100, what it really does is this electricity will flush the fluids out. So if you had puffiness, it goes away because electrically this charge is higher than this one. A negative pole, a negative magnet, a negative magnet, the stronger negative magnet repels. That's one of the ways we use electrotherapy when we're trying to reduce puffiness. Now the other thing they do when you're using an electrotherapy device for cosmetic is when you make muscles pump, you give enough electricity to excite motor nerves. What happens is that pumping action of the muscles themselves actually increases blood flow. Well one of the first things you see when you see increased blood flow is the skin, instead of being pale and gray, it automatically starts becoming more rosy, more pinkish. And that's simply because you've increased blood flow in the area. Now, the whole process of doing this, and you can actually get on cosmetic things where you're trying to reduce cellulite. Well, there's a component of uh, liquid in cellulite. So you got some chemical polarity reversals going on. But once you start pumping muscles, remember our system is basically a contained system. It's like hydraulics in a tractor. You have fluid, but you don't let it out, and when you apply pressure, it's able to move things, where our body is a closed system. So when we put a stimulator on an area where we're trying to slim down and trim up, when you start pumping the muscles, you also cause vasoconstriction. When you contract, that also repels or pushes away fluids that should not be there. Now, the kicker to this stuff is how often do you do it for how long and what areas do you place electrodes? Well, the bottom line is that's where when you're looking at cosmetic purposes, don't accept the machine, the electrotherapy device, as simply being a device that will help you with cellulite, that will help you look younger, that will make the wrinkles go away. It's not that simple. You have to have some very specific protocols. You have to follow them. In some situations, you have to use exercise to accentuate what you're trying to do in conjunction with the electrotherapy device. But that's just to give people and to give you a little concept of where you see and hear about people in Europe especially, in Japan, they use electrotherapy devices in order to look younger and feel better and so on and so forth. That is part of the physics behind electrotherapy in its specific use for cosmetic purposes. Hope this helped you out a little bit.